The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Canola Producers Commission, SAS Canola, and Manitoba Canola Growers. Hello, I'm Dale Leftwich with Real Agriculture. Today I'm with Joel McDonald, uh, who is a project manager with PAMI. How are you doing today, Joel? Very well. We're out here in a canola field today near Humboldt, which is where the head offices for PAMI are. And we're here because uh, PAMI has just come out with a new guide on straight cutting canola. Joel, what are some of the things that were covered in this uh, guide? So this, uh, this guidebook uh, in my hand is a product of uh, a three-year research study conducted by PAMI, uh, focusing on obviously straight cutting canola and the aspects of uh, header selection and uh, the variety you use and shatter loss that occurs uh, both uh, environmental as that crop stands and matures as well as uh, during harvesting itself. So let's talk a little bit about the headers. So there's, there were several different headers that were examined. Why is it important to uh, make sure that you really look at the headers right off the bat? Um, well, the, the questions always came up, you know, what, what's the loss in comparison to, to swathing? Um, and so there's lots of different header options out there. So the, the study looked at, uh, of course, uh, swath and belt pickup, uh, you know, conventional harvesting, as well as uh, a draper header, and a rigid header, rigid auger header, as well as a rigid auger header with an extendable knife cutter bar, more the, the style of header you'd see in Europe. So that was the, that was the, the range of the equipment that was included. And uh, in the end, the findings were that, you know, all options are viable, but some, uh, some were better than others in uh, certain conditions in certain years and, and on the average overall. Yeah, in Europe they actually have a completely different setup generally to uh, to do their canola and uh, specialized equipment. Yeah, you bet. I mean, in Europe they've been straight cutting canola for uh, as long as they've been growing it, um, and it's it's catching on here in Canada. So um, you're you're seeing more of these headers are are available here. They're they're coming. Um, the dealers are bringing them in because there's uh, there's demand. Um, so uh, this also talks just a little bit about combine settings, but that isn't the main purpose of this guidebook. Right, so you can't, uh, you can't go to the field and do eight site years of research uh, focused on header loss without learning a few things about the combine along the way. Um, so that was, uh, th there's a few tidbits in there about, uh, about it and, and, you know, things that you learn in certain conditions where, it, whether it be, you know, really green, uh, green, thick, heavy stalks versus uh, really dry, lighter crop, uh, you know, it makes a big difference what's going through the combine. So uh, there's a few tidbits along there about that, but the, the primary focus of the study was around the header. Okay, another thing that uh, uh, the book covers, the guidebook covers, is uh, variety selection. So do you want to just explain a little bit about uh, the importance of variety? Yep, you bet. So we kept the we kept the, the scope of the project uh, uh, not specific to a variety, but more in terms of uh, category, so shatter resistant and uh, non-shatter resistant. Um, so the, the findings of the study showed that uh, the shatter resistant varieties uh, uh, reduce shatter loss during harvest. Uh, it, it seems silly to say, but um, we were out there, we proved it, uh, we measured it, uh, and, and it worked. Um, the, the study actually, uh, so at the time of swathing, uh, the field was cut, and then we went around and placed, uh, placed narrow long pans down the seed rows in the standing canopy uh, to capture that, uh, that seed loss that would occur, you know, as the, as the crop sways in the wind as it matures. Um, those pans were gathered up and, and that quantified the, uh, the shatter loss uh, that occurred. Um, and then as we were harvesting, another set of pans got pushed in the rows um, and, and we would harvest over top of them, uh, you know, stopping before the combine discharge, uh, you know, uh, contaminated those pans. Uh, and then you'd be able to see what, uh, what actually happened at the, uh, at the header. So, um, again, those shatter resistant varieties fairly consistently showed, uh, showed reduced header loss. Um, you know, the specific details of those, uh, you know, the quantities of that and the, and the graphs and figures are available, some of them in the guidebook as well as some of them in the, in the full complete report. 
So then you took that information actually, and there is a, a economic comparison at the back of the guidebook as well. Sure. So those economic comparisons always have to be taken with a grain of salt because there's lots of assumptions based on you know machinery costs and and operating costs for for farms. But uh, you know the the assumptions made were were reasonable estimates that should be applicable to to some farms anyway. So. Um, in, in the end, uh, I think it was the uh, extendable knife, rigid cutter, cutter bar header uh, with a shatter resistant variety that uh, that showed to be the most profitable, uh, or sorry, the the most revenue. Um, yes. And so that, uh, with the other ones not far behind, uh, at, at the end of the project, the conclusion was that all all of the methods tried were viable and and possible options. So. Uh, if you want to try straight cutting canola, you don't necessarily need to go out and, and retool with complete new headers. Um, you don't necessarily need to change your varieties, but uh, they're, all, they're all important factors that should be considered along the way. So Pammy has done a lot of work on uh, a lot of different areas. This is one uh, one book booklet that's been put out. There are other booklets that uh, they've also done on some other aspects of straight cutting uh, canola. Sure, our counterparts out in Portage of Prairie, Manitoba have done uh, uh, a two-year study on looking at uh, pre-harvest treatments, uh, so desiccating, not desiccating, as w in comparison to swathing. Um, as well as a little bit more about the harvesting efficiency, combine efficiency, um, you know, how, how uh, what your harvesting rates were uh, uh, under those conditions. So that's just another, another part of the equation that needs to be considered uh, when making decisions about straight cutting canola. So there were all kinds of different uh, groups that uh, were involved in uh, putting this project together, I guess. Sure, this project for this guidebook, uh, the project was funded by uh, the Ministry of Agriculture in Saskatchewan as well as Growing Forward 2 um, and SAS Canola and Western Grains Research Foundation. So, you know, without, uh, without those dollars uh, to, to fund projects like this, uh, um, the, the work is impossible. So. And private industry and farmers actually kicked in as well and helped out? You bet. Uh, well, the farmers kicked in because they're funding uh, some of those research foundations or, or research organizations um, and, uh, and supporting with cooperating, letting us uh, use some of their fields to, uh, to, to go out and do these projects as well as industry, uh, notably uh, uh, New Holland and Honeybee supplying uh, equipment for three years um, for these projects as well as uh, Bayer and DeKalb for uh, providing seed uh, to, to grow the to grow the crops so so all the information that PAMI develops is actually shows up on your website do you have resources for for farmers who are looking to do this kind of thing you bet there's a resource resource library on our website it contains uh, all of these uh, research uh, pro reports that we talk about as well as they should be available on the funders websites uh, as well so uh, and if you can't find it uh, give us a ring uh, and look us up online Okay, this is uh, Dale Leftwich with Real Agriculture. I just want to thank Joel McDonald for coming with me to, uh, to talk about the new guidelines for straight-cutting canola. Thanks a lot for being with us today, Joel. You bet. Thank you very much.